Hello. Shiren here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Finally, I finished the joinery work in this house. I'm now putting the tools away. This is a good opportunity, so I have lined up the tools, and I would like to share them with you. Let's get started. These are blankets. They are not for a nap. I use them to wrap exposed wood, or I lay them on the truck bed when transporting building materials. This is a fan. These are circular saws. This one is corded, and this one is battery powered. This one appears to be smaller, but it can cut wood up to 65 mm thick. This one can only cut up to 50 mm. This is a battery powered one that I always use. And this is a miter saw. This tool is essential for carpentry work. It's very useful. If the blade is sharp, it can cut from any angle and into any shape. There is no specific use for it. It can be used in many ways. I have three miter saws. Only this one is new. The others are old. I first use it on the second floor, then the first floor, and then rough cut for framing. This is an air compressor. Today, air-powered nail guns are used. This is the air compressor for that. The air compressor is connected to this hose. This one is for high pressure, and this one is for low pressure. Yellow is for low pressure, red is for high pressure. These are the guns that will be attached to the hose, sakimono in Japanese. I will begin with a large gun. This is a nail gun, capable of driving nails up to 90 mm long. This handles nails up to 75 mm and up to 50 mm. Guns for 65 mm are also available. For 65 mm nails, I use a gun for 75 mm nails. For 75 mm nails, I use a gun for 90 mm nails. For a single 75 mm nail, I can use a 75 mm gun. But when nailing 30 to 50 nails in a row, I use a gun with a higher performance margin. It makes it easier to work. These are for steel nails only. I use these guns when nailing framework and seals. I used to use a screw gun until recently. This is a newer one. As its name suggests, this screw gun is for screwing boards only. This is also old. You can see the thin and short nails are set. This is called a finish. It's used for screwing thin nails with large heads. This is a tacker. It is for a 4mm by 25mm staple. This is for nails with even smaller heads. About 30 pins with small heads are set. Pins can be nailed one by one with this. It's called a pin nailer. It's very useful. I use it on exposed wood that is noticeable. This is a stapler. It's like a stapler for paper, but it's bigger and used in construction. These two are sanders. They are for different uses. This is an ordinary sander that uses sandpaper. If it's going to be painted or oiled, I sand it with very fine sandpaper like this. Using this, the surface will feel similar to a hand plane surface. You can't tell the difference if you close your eyes and touch it. But when it comes to shine, the hand plane wins over the sander. The sanders are great for finishing countertops. There are rulers on the wall. This is an angle adjustable ruler. This is an ordinary right angled ruler. This is a level bar and a straight ruler. I use a ruler when cutting a board and to measure the straight line. There are regular rulers, a short one and a long one. These are circular saw guides. I set it on the side of the circular saw. I don't use any more than this on the side. Three is enough. This is an ordinary crowbar. It's like a large nail puller. 
I don't have to remove the nails while working on the site. I use a crowbar to pull or attach the timber. I don't use it for pulling the nails, but for attaching. These are clamps. Both long and short types. I can handle any situation if I have this many clamps. This is a tool that I often use. It's a ruler that stretches and shrinks. It can measure the actual size. This is an angle grinder. I used this without a safety cover last time and was reprimanded. Fortunately, I found a cover. I use this angle grinder when cutting steel only. I don't cut wood or set sandpaper to finish. If an anchor bolt is attached in an undesired place, or if I need to cut a hagoita bolt, or if a tricky screw such as taro kick needs to be removed, I use it. I don't use it very often. I use this to cut boards. The series of dust collector at the site. I connect it and cut the board. But it gets its way when cutting the boards if the hose is attached. Even this power cord gets in the way. It is my special gem. This is an electric planer. It uses a replaceable blade and can plane up to 150 millimeters wide. There used to be a lot more wood used for joinery back in the day. I took a small planer and a super surfacer. In the countryside, houses use 3 to 5 times more wood than this house has used. Wood for joinery isn't used as much anymore. I only use this planer to adjust the size if the super surfacer has been used in the workshop. It's enough to use one electric planer. This is a groove cutter. As the name suggests, it's for cutting grooves. The 21mm replaceable blade is attached. I cut a groove using this. As you can see in this kamoi, it can cut a groove neatly once the depth is adjusted. This groove cutter is older than the others. I only use it when cutting anti-slip grooves on the stairs. I lift the blade on. This blade is a type that cuts a round groove. This is only for stair anti-slip purposes. This groove cutter can cut a groove up to 15 millimeters. It's for a small groove. On this blade, you can see the screen shim's thickness differs. When the blade rotates, the core will shift. This allows grooves of 12 to 30 millimeters to be cut. It's a useful blade. This groove cutter is for sloped areas. The guide ruler can be adjusted diagonally. This allows the groove to be cut in sloped areas. For example, you can use a groove cutter if you want to insert a board on the sloped part, such as this. That groove cutter makes a diagonal groove. This is a trimmer. It's a very old tool. So, I'm embarrassed to show it. This is used around the front surface of the counter. By attaching different blade shapes, it can be used for many things. This is an ordinary woodworking drill. The 30mm drill is attached. It's used when cutting the frame at the beginning. I mainly use it to drill anchor bolt holes in the sills. In this house, I used it for air cycles in the walls. I used this to drill about 100 holes in the insulation. I don't use this large drill after starting joinery work. I don't use this thick drill bit either. In a home center, you can find an impact driver that drills up to 24 millimeters. I can use an impact driver instead. Above here, I made a few sanding blocks and wrote a number on them. 
When I start working on the inside, I start from the floor. I make three to four sanding blocks at a time. I use it to chamfer the ends of the floorboards. It can be used on a variety of parts if I attach fine sandpaper to it. At first, I wasn't expecting much from the sandpaper, but it's useful if the fine sandpaper is attached. This is a laser level. It can measure horizontally and vertically. My work has become a lot easier since this was released. Before using this, we did this. It's called Furisage. Like this, we hung the balls, <laughs> hung the weights, then measure it. 38 millimeters, 38 millimeters. We measured vertically like this. Furisage could only be used to measure vertically. Measuring horizontally was challenging. There were no laser levels then. So we use a water level. I don't have one here. A clear tube is attached to a can. And I measure the water level at the end of the tube. This is an impact driver. Impact. It doesn't mean influence. This impact driver delivers four thrust three times in one rotation. Most carpentry drivers are now impact drivers. Drivers with such features are called impact drivers. We simply call it impact. I only take these three drills to the site. Even if there are four or five of them, they will be old. So I take three drills and change the drill bits for each application. It's not an impact driver, but I started using an ordinary screwdriver when I started working on my own. Screws were first used in the building trade about 40 years ago. Since then, a lot of drills like this have been released. I prefer Hitachi and Haikoki, so I use those brands. But I used to use Makita. Makita's driver had a sick grip, so my hands are rugged. They're not very large. It was difficult to grasp the grip. The grip on the Hitachi driver is thin, so I started using it. As soon as I bought the Hitachi driver, Makita released its own thin grip driver. I wanted one. But due to the compatibility of the battery, I continued using the Hitachi. Recently, I bought this online. This is useful. I'm sure there are a lot of people who already use this. The light is LED and it's bright. A carpenter I know recommended this to me. I bought well. This is a gun for urethane and for caulking. These are cleaning supplies. I bought my first dust collector on the site. Before the dust collector, I used this broom. This is my favorite broom. I only use this one. It is 980 yen. A 780 yen broom will break easily. If it's 980 yen, it will clean well. Here is standard wood glue. It's a versatile glue that I always use. It is made in Germany. I'm getting senile. So these are bifocals and 100 yen glasses. This is a helmet. Helmets must be worn, not just prepared. This is my body, a radio. Since I always work alone, I always turn the volume up loud at the site. I'm also getting hard of hearing, so the radio is becoming louder. I haven't finished cleaning this area yet. This is a workbench. I cut and plane the timber here. I've been using it for over 20 years. I've used this while adjusting the top to be flat. I cut wood on this using a handsaw, a screw from the end. Like this. Timber stops at the screw when planing. The timber won't get scratched this way. One thing I have to be careful of, if the timber is not set and I touch the nail, I will get a serious injury. So when I'm not using this, I loosen it like this. 
As you can see, this workbench is old, but one set can load about one ton due to different leg tilts. This is a low workbench that I use while squatting. I can work in a narrow space with this one. We don't use a high workbench when doing precise work. We use a high workbench only when working with a lot of wood over a long period of time. Otherwise, it may cause back pain. Basic carpentry work is done on a low workbench. This is a wooden mall. These are ordinary step ladders sold at a home center. I take 4 or 6 to a job site. Odd numbers are inconvenient. If I take 6 with 2 low step ladders, it's enough for a house. Other than this, there are 6 or 8 shaku types. Under here is also a step ladder. This can support 30 boards with room to spare. It can be used as both a workbench and a step ladder. This tool is called Tonton, used for installing a floor. This is a jack that I used to install the kamoi. This is a blower and a screw bag. Many young carpenters carry their tools nowadays. It's like a tool shop. Everything is inside the tool belt, including drills. But at my age, I'm sure I'll hurt my back. So I don't carry tools. I use this as a screw bag instead. The tools inside here are a cutter, a hammer, a tape measure, a small crowbar, and a small carpenter's square. I only carry these tools. This is a toolbox for small tools. Nothing special is in here. I have arranged the tools inside the box. You can see they are in order, but it's usually a mess. I put the drill bit that I always use in this box. These two are handheld. Well, everything is handheld. These are ordinary toolboxes. In the past, I could do all carpentry work with one box. But I now need to bring this mount for modern day carpentry work. These are the tools inside. I put the tools like this and carry them. These are hand planes. Many of these hand planes aren't ready to use. I don't have a special hand plane, so in a box like this, I transport them to the site. Basically, I wrap a towel around the hand plane. I store some planes in a paper box, like this. One piece of wood shaving is placed under it to absorb moisture. The planer can warp if it's moist. Also, fine rust will develop on the steel. It's the same for the chisels. If rust develops on the blade, it'll be hard to remove the rust the next time I use it. I make sure that the blade won't rust, so that I don't need to sharpen it. This box is for storing tools other than hand planes. This is a hand saw. Chisel. There are various tools inside this box. It's a good time to share this. This is a hand saw bag. It's rare to find these anymore. Ichiban Boshi is my favorite brand, so I use that brand's bag for all the hand saws. Ichiban Boshi. Buntaburo. Some people know about it. Inside here are ordinary replaceable blade saws. This fine saw is called a dosuki saw. For joinery, I take this number of saws. These are large chisels for striking. I don't use these for precise work. When I work inside, I use one sometimes when needed, or to cut the grooves for the stringers of the staircases. 
な農業で仕事をします。These are ordinary chisels for joinery work. These are called oiwe chisels. It's wider than a large one, but smaller in size. This is how I grip and use it. The smallest one is 3 millimeters, and they're sorted by size. These are wet cells. I take this many to the site. They are sorted in rough order from here. This is 1000 grit. This king is 1200 grit. This is about 1200 to 1400 grit. This is a natural stone. This is 12,000 grit. This is a diamond cell. I use it to maintain wet cells. When sharpening the hand plane, 1200 grit is enough. No need to use this one. Then sharpen it with a natural stone. And then lightly use this 12,000 grit to remove burrs. This is the way I use wet cells. This toolbox is for anything else. Everything is inside here. Sumitubo, 100 yen scissors, spool, and screwdriver. Nothing special here. These are my squares. I have used a traditional unit of measure called the sun ever since the old days, but the plants are now in centimeters. So I take two squares, centimeters, and sun. If I only take one, I leave it somewhere, and it's hard to find. I spend more time looking for it. I don't need a different scale on the back. I use squares that have the same scale on both sides for joinery. This is how I use it. It may only be possible to measure in this way. If both sides have the same scale, it's easy to measure. I have three squares. This is a large hammer. I don't usually use it for joinery. I store various other tools in this toolbox. These are all of my tools. I've shared all the tools that I use for my joinery work. I have a lot of old tools. If I replace these machines with the latest ones, it would cost about a million yen. It must cost about 1,500,000 yen, with other tools included. Today, carpentry work is becoming more about tools than skills. There is no wonder I need so many tools. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.